All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, June 21st meeting of the Finance Committee. Um, call the order, I guess this is everyone we're gonna have tonight. And we only have a few things to go over, the first being uh, the accepting of the previous meeting's minutes. The previous meeting, actually our first mistake was found at the top, it should say April 21st, it says June 21st. I'm not so good that I can take the minutes before they happen. <laughs> um, Let's take a look and let me know if you see anything else. This was that last meeting we had right before town meeting. We went over the last couple of items and then went over the uh, spreadsheet, the finance committee report that I had put together, which I've attached to these minutes. So I wasn't there, I make a motion that we approve them. Seconded. And then what I will do is I will vote for it after I invoke the rule of necessity. Okay. Since we have four people that attended the meeting, and the four people that attended, they're not all here, so they can't vote for it, and we have a committee of seven, we have to make sure that we vote this. Since it's required business, I'm gonna vote aye even though I wasn't there. Yeah, but there's only three. Uh, Ralph or Jeff, any other comments on the, on the minutes? Okay. No good. Uh, all no. those in favor accepting, uh, say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, so the main. Skip voted the rule of necessity. Okay, great. Two necessitated votes. That's my first necessity vote. I'm gonna that's great. That's that important. Yeah, yeah, I put that on my resume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's good. <laughs> Um, the two main things we have to do tonight, one is to go through some transfer fund uh, requests and the other is to just do a little bit of a recap overview of the budget process this year and any things we want to start to think about for the process, big picture, for next year. So I thought we'd start with the transfer requests. Doug has handed them to me here. Um, I guess the one general comment I'd make on these, and Doug maybe you can help me a little bit or some people here. The, the amount in total is fairly substantial, um, and it's uh, just under forty-five thousand dollars altogether between mm -hmm. all the requests. Mm -hmm. And you know, obviously, there's some things that come up right at the end of the year. But I think, I think we do better to try to put stuff through earlier. You know, I, I think some of these were known a while ago. Um, at least the retirement one was known that there was maybe not the exact amount, but that it was. Yeah. Yeah, Something. we knew that there were errors with the way that the retirement uh, costs were uh, had been allocated. Uh, the way we did budgeting last year, we took the departmental estimate for salary, calculated their percentage of retirement based on that salary, and then assessed and then assumed that that much money would be coming in. Um, however, because in a couple of cases, the departments did not have people on. There weren't people actually in the positions. Therefore, the, the town clerk felt that she could not actually assess those salary costs, the retirement costs, to, the, to that department. Um, specifically, it's the EMS department where a certain amount had been budgeted for certain staffing levels, and the staffing levels weren't at 100% for the entire year. And so therefore, the retirement monies that came from the EMS were not as high as we expected. Um, it's not exclusively that, but that was the, the majority contributor to this, this error. And I will take some part in the, in the responsibility for it because of the way it was uh, allocated. Um, earlier this spring, uh, the town clerk discovered this, realized it was going to be a problem. We spoke, and in our budgeting for FY17, we corrected this, um, basically the assessment for retirement costs specifically are no longer allocated um, based on expected um, levels of employment or expected salaries or expected employment costs. It's actually allocated uh, in a more fair, more equitable way. Um, broadly speaking, for the town, it doesn't matter. For the highway, for the town clerk's office, for the administrator's office, it doesn't really matter because it's, that's just the cost of doing business. It only really affects the town when it's monies that are coming from more than just Deerfield taxation, right. like the EMS, like the wastewater. 
Right. Um, in those cases, what we did is um, Barb actually estimated very conservatively. And then anything above and beyond that, we will assess after the fact, and it will help to reduce what Deerfield will pay in the long run, instead of running into errors where we're having to make up a, a, a deficit like we are this year. Okay, so. and that's and that we'll talk a little bit more about that detail when we get to it. But I just you know for me when I opened this today, I was pretty shocked and I scrambled to check what the balance of the reserve fund was, and, and thankfully it's more than that, but not a lot yeah. more than that. Yeah. And I think that the you know the concern you know as a taxpayer is that the reserve fund turns into kind of the kitty that gets raided you know in the last two weeks of June. Mm -hmm. Um, so, with that as an initial backdrop, yeah. let's start with the easy ones. These aren't all hard ones and aren't all big numbers. Um, the first one is a request for $100 to pay the town moderator um, due to special town meetings, and I'm guessing the second night of exactly. the meeting. So, the balance right now is negative 50. They're asking for 100. Right. Um, Make a motion to approve that. Second. All, right. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Um, the next one is $250 being requested for the assessor's clerk salary. And the only question I have is it says the additional expenses due to leap year. When we calculate out salaries, we use the number of 2,088 hours per year, which adds up to, normally you think a working year is 2,000 hours. It really isn't. 2,000 hours is 50 weeks. Uh -huh. 52 weeks is 2,080 hours. We add an extra eight hours into it, and we thought that that was going to be enough to cover us. Uh, with the case of the treasurer's office being a department of, I'm sorry, the accountant's office being a department of one, and the assessor's office being a department of one, because this is a leap year, and because of the way the warrants fell, it was a weird fluke, each of those two departments was off by about eight hours of money. So, uh, I believe the accountant's uh, number is just barely enough to cover it, or she's transferring money over from a different line or something along those lines. But in the case of the assessor's clerk, we have to, I think it's the assessor's clerk you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. We have to transfer, really it's like 190 and change, but we figured 250 just to be safe. Okay, and so. the balance is positive now just because that's one more warrant. Because we've got so another two okay. warrants or so. Okay. okay. Make a motion to approve that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the next one, this is a request for $600 for the Zoning Board of Appeals. This is similar to one we had from them a couple months ago, where uh, they will incur costs that are reimbursed to the town, but the reimbursements go to the general fund, which is why they sometimes come in looking to, to do this. And, and Doug mentions in here that we'd like to change this so that there isn't this constant right. mismatch and, and they will offset and do offset already. Um, actually, with both the ZBA and the um the planning board actually my strong recommendation next year is going to be to make sure that uh, their budget is rounded down almost to zero hundred dollars for each of the two committees but to allow them to use the fees that they get for the hearings and so on and so forth to pay their expenses um, use of a revolving fund would make it much easier and in both cases it would mean that the revolving fund would be on the positive side no matter what at the end of the year but is that going to be a problem going from one fiscal year to another um, with a revolving fund, no. As long as the fund is reauthorized, the money stays in the fund up to whatever their limit is set. So if you set a limit of $10,000, they can carry over up to $10,000 in a revolving fund. Okay. Yeah. Probably makes sense to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, the next one is a request uh, for the animal control officer account. I don't think it's the name of the account actually, that's what it says here. The amount is for $1,194.88. Um, I do remember this being brought up, uh, the chief brought this up when he talked with us. There was a uh, contract negotiation as this person is an employee of Greenfield that retroactively affected FY15, 16, and 17 going forward. This is the amount for the catch up for all those three years to kind of get us back on track. I think um, even I don't think it's for all those three years. I think it's just for FY16. Okay. And I think FY17, the number we appropriated, is also short. Okay. So then I'd have a question, I guess, just because if it's twelve hundred bucks and we pay twenty five percent of it, that means that it's just under five thousand dollars. So if it's for one fiscal year, that seems like a big raise. Uh yeah, yeah, it's kind of nuts. Um, they they had an increased budget. It wasn't it wasn't exclusively due to the raise. It was an increase of 
other expenses related to that d department, but yeah. Yeah, um, it's when we went to the regional animal control, the cost went up five, six, seven thousand dollars in any given year. We went from seven or eight thousand dollars up to eleven, now to fourteen, now to sixteen, or something like that. Okay. So. All right. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'd certainly, you know, whatever the salary is, we need to pay that. But I think we should, or I'll try to put another call into the chief to just iron that out because I thought that, you know, this says the FY sixteen is a two percent wage increase, so that would be like thousand bucks could be right yeah and I think there's something about another thousand dollar stipend so that's two thousand bucks but that still is well, another that's what he's asking for is one thousand nine hundred and change right but we only pay twenty five percent so it's four times whatever we're paying is the increase mm -hmm. okay right I, I know that he included a great deal of information with that request yes I, did, I didn't look at it too closely so yeah I did I just couldn't get back to okay. the only explanation I had was that it was a catch-up for 15, 16, and 17, so. Um, so how much are we uh, allocating? Uh, the request is for $1,194.88. That is our portion. For the town of Deerfield. For the town of Deerfield. So move. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? No. All right, unanimous. Okay. Uh, so let's see, that was that. that. Okay, there's three left. Okay. Three of them, not four ones. Okay, uh, the next one is a request for $4,200 uh, for street lights and uh, saying that variations in electrical costs were unforeseen. Don't we usually carry 35000 in that budget? Yep. And it went up to. Uh, our, our expected expenses for the rest of this year is going to be around 38 and change. So, yeah. And now that is, what is 3,800? That's for the month of June? No, it's not just for a single month. It's, I'm trying to remember specifically, each month is roughly about 35, about 35, yeah, it probably is for the month of June. Yeah, it's about a little more than one month. Okay. That that. Three thirty eight hundred four thousand dollars is going to cover. And that rate reset higher recently, or uh, it was over the course of the year that the rate varied in such a way that it was higher than was budgeted. And did we have a higher budget for this in FY seventeen? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's level funded. Yeah. Yeah. See, so that doesn't make any We're sense. We're going to have an issue. Well, no, it doesn't make any sense. But um, we didn't have the ability to predict forward and determine what our lighting expenses were going to be for FY17 back in January when we actually made the request. Right, well that's so, why I asked when the rate went up. It was over the course of time, but again, we didn't have the ability to, and maybe we should have, maybe we need to be more closely monitoring every single electric meter and, and our usage and be able to track these expenses on a month to month basis. Um, as, it, as it stands, I think we're gonna wind up being under but for our appropriation for lights only. Just street lights. Yeah. Okay. And we don't have any offsetting uh, power supplies like uh, the one we have on a sort of treatment plant in Old Deerfield. No, there's no offsetting power supplies. Uh, the only thing we can possibly do uh, would be look at replacing the street lights with lower um, or higher efficiency lighting, like LED lighting. That's going to be expensive. Yeah, exactly. You're talking about a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars at a minimum to swap out each individual lamp when it comes to including the labor and the fee that the electric company is going to charge and all that. So, okay. unless, unless there's a grant to do it, it doesn't make sense financially. Now, do we buy any of this through Hampshire Power? Uh, our electricity is all through Hampshire Cog, yes. So is this a Western Mass charge or is this a Hampshire it's, Power? I would have to go back and look at the individual bills and determine. Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Um, it may be a combination of ever source as well as Hampshire Cog. Year, then. Well, that's where for me, I don't have a problem with those seven lights on or having to pay if it costs more, but you know, I don't know that the reserve fund on June 21st is the right place to write that well, budget. Not, no, you're right. It's not the right thing, but at least we know it's a problem, so when it comes up again next year, we can remember that and say, okay, we know that. Now it makes me wonder whether our $80,000 allocation for the reserve fund is enough. Well, it seems that every year we find a way to use just about all of it up, so I'd be inclined to make it less, not more. Well, remember that this year we used $29,000 of the reserve fund 
for the traffic loop over at the elementary school, which right. was considered an emergency at the time, right. and yeah. another three or four thousand dollars to offset a, a budget deficit for the roof, roof construction. Yeah. So, if it weren't for those two, we would be looking at about forty-six thousand, forty-eight thousand in reserve fund transfers okay. now at the end of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Make a motion we approve this. I'll second that. Any other comments? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, the next one is um, a request for twelve thousand uh, for legal expense. Um, and you know, we had talked about this. We knew that last year that the legal uh, expense line item was underfunded, and we we're going to be you know coming on to this. Right now, the balance in this fund is uh, negative six thousand. So basically, that's half the twelve thousand request is for money that's already been spent. And the other half is for money that's anticipated to be spent. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's really just my question about, and I know you're doing some contract negotiations. My question, I guess, has to do with what is FY17 billing versus FY16 billing? How does it work as you're doing stuff that carries over uh, and the I, bills come in before or after? I checked with Brenda on that. Um, basically, legal expense is one of those things where you don't really separate out a task as being allocated towards a specific fiscal year. Uh, you know, if, if the work was done in at the very tail end of FY seven, 16, sorry, mm -hmm. and we don't get the bill until FY17, we just pay the bill in whatever fiscal year, um, whatever fiscal year's budget that we receive the bill. Because it's an ongoing, fairly, broadly speaking, it's a consistent expense, mm -hmm. you know, all things being equal. Okay. So. How much we have in our fund? How much we have allocated for last year? Uh, it was only 20,000, I think. 20 grand. And yeah. what did we move it to this year? 28. Yes. I think it's higher. I think it's 25 or 26. I don't know off the top of my head. But it is higher, five, 6,000 higher. Um, I would like to defend this a little bit. Some of the legal expenses due to the uh, closing on a couple of different properties, which will result in cash increase to the town, um, mm -hmm. money coming into the, the town's hands. One, uh, some of the legal expenses due to the negotiation for the pilot agreement and the structured tax agreement for the solar project, which will again mean more revenue for the town. So I see that as part of this, at least, as being a short-term investment that we'll see returns later on. You know, part of the cost of doing business. I, I agree. I agree with you on that. I think I just like the last one. I'd like to reiterate. I really think we need to get away from doing this stuff through the reserve fund at the end. This is one where ideally. A lot of these projects you're speaking about, we knew about mm -hmm. beforehand. Mm -hmm. We could have requested the 6,000 accounts in the hole however many months ago, and as that number got smaller, then just carry it over and handle it in 17 and avoid this kind of end of the year moving around. Um, but I do understand where this is going. I do think that you have a lot. Um, carry over, handle it in the Like, let's say, that, let's say that you had come and requested 10,000 yeah. two months ago. You're like, look, I don't know where we're gonna end up, but it's gonna be yeah. somewhere in that context. If it's less, we'll send it back. Sure. If it's more, we'll put the rest of the bills into July. Or we could, in April, if we know we're gonna run a okay. shortage, could run it through the special. Well, that's the other thing is like 10,000, like is an sure. amount that sure. I would love you to see. Add. Yeah. yeah. You know, like some of these bigger amounts, I think really belong in special town meeting, especially for things that we, I, I guess I would tend to agree with you, uh, particularly on the um, on the unemployment, the twenty six thousand dollars. The next one that, that really should have gone to the uh, right. to the special town meeting if we if we knew at that time. I can't speak to whether or not we did whether the calculations were done there solidly, right. uh, because I do know that a lot of times those offsets, those administrative indirect costs, actually get allocated at the end of the fiscal year. Right. Um, broadly speaking, you know, in terms of the philosophy of it, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and I'll strive to do what I can over the course of the next year to try to monitor our expenses and pay closer attention. And that's where I think, you know, we had to do earlier with the traffic circle, that was kind of an emergency in nature thing that did come up and needed oh, sure. to be addressed. And having a special town meeting for just that one line item where there was anything planned did not make a lot of sense. But when we had some stuff coming up, I'd really love to see next year some of these bigger line items get pushed into that, even if we end up having to come back for a last thousand bucks because you don't know exactly what it's going to be. Sure. Make a motion we approve the 12,000. I'll second that. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then the last one here is a request for $26,200 uh, for the, um, it says county retirement, so the uh, Frank County retirement. Franklin County retirement, retirement account. Um, and it says, uh, this is to cover the shortage in the account due to over budgeting 
uh, a reimbursement amount from SCEM. So basically, my read on that, correct me if I'm wrong, is Barbara assumed SCEMS was going to be reimbursing them twenty-six thousand more than ultimately they ended up billing them right. for. I would I would uh, simply modify that statement by saying that um, the that I'll use myself. I assumed we'd be getting reimbursed more, and Barbara mm -hmm. agreed with the number. Mm -hmm. um, the number came from Zach's budget originally, passed through my hands and the select board, passed through you, and we all agreed. Okay, this sounds great. We're going to get that offset, so on and so forth. Um, and as we moved into the year, as the employment numbers didn't work out, that's when Barb was really realizing that she was putting herself out too far. Right. Instead of asking for the appropriation that she needed, like her instinct was driving her to do, right. she actually, she let us uh, you know, take the lead on that and we learned it's probably not a good idea. And so we didn't do it this year. Right. This, this we do expect to have well, been. Well, and that's where I remember, you know, we, our committee pushed back and said, Barbara and Zach need to agree. We don't care yeah. what they agree exactly. on as long as the two of them agree. Yep. Yep. So I'm glad we got that sorted out for yep. 17, but again, we knew about that four months ago. Um, if you did, great. I didn't know about it until a couple weeks well, ago. Well, when they changed the SCEMS budget as a result of this, I'm sure that they recognized True. that this was headed in this direction. Maybe they didn't know the exact number. Right. We didn't know the exact number. Because this is a real big number to put through Finance Committee Reserve Fund on June 21st. Is this primarily from SCEMS? I think it's entirely. It's entirely because, you know, there's no, it's only, this would only affect, so the, the town owes a certain amount of money and that's what we owe. There's only a handful of enterprise funds or, or entities that have offsets that actually pay Barbara to offset part of that cost. SCEMS, the Senior Center, and Wastewater are the three. Right. Um, so if it's, the police department that's off, it doesn't really matter because it's all in the same pot anyway. It's only when one of those three is off that it affects what Barbara gets sent, and so then the amount that she has to send in is too high or too low. So this is, what's, what's, the, what's the amount, 20? $26,200. And this was at 14%? Was this the 14? Uh, no, this is 18.91%. And it was supposed to be 18, it was calculated out as 18.9% or 18% or something like that of all of the salaries for every department everywhere uh, yes. throughout town. Um, and Zach gave us a number for salaries, mm -hmm. $680,000, rough number. Yeah. So we calculated out the 18% on that. Mm -hmm. That's how much we're gonna get from SCEMS. That's how much we can offset Barb's budget by. Great, we're good. Except he didn't spend the 680, he spent less than that. Like 400,000. 480 or four, whatever it happened to yeah. be workout, and therefore he's not paying in 18.9% on $680,000. Bob doesn't have the, the offsetting amount that she needs, and we get stuck. So we've got to make up the budget line because of it. Um, we're not getting paid as much from the enterprise. Line. That's what I said. So we got to make up the budget out of our. Yeah. And if the and was the conversation had if the enter, enterprise fund was budgeted to pay that amount, why they didn't pay that amount? I understand that's not really I, Well, up. that was a conversation I had with Barb, and she said simply she couldn't justify it yeah. because of the way we allocate those expenses as a right. percentage of how much a person makes. Okay. Um, we did both agree that that started a conversation, I think that has led to an offsetting of expenses we're no longer, like for example, the indirect cost for the EMS. We're not going to use the proposed budget as the number to calculate. We've talked about this. The number to calculate what that offset should be, the administrative offset should be, we're using pre the previous year. Mm -hmm. So with that so number is a known factor that won't change depending on how the budget is developed. And I think Barb and I had a conversation similar to that related to the retirement. Because once a retirement gives us the bill, that's the bill, period. It won't change if the town of Deerfield fired 99% of its employees, we'd still be responsible for that whole amount of money. Right. And so what's hard about this so. is when you have an entity that has an offset that has a fluctuating salary schedule year to year, either going up or going down. If it's steady, then it's easy, because like I said, you use the year before and you're gonna end up pretty close pretty to home. Close, right, right. So this is, but this is an example of a, of a department that over, didn't overspend, but they over budgeted by 200 plus thousand dollars in, in a salary account. 
they didn't spend it. You, you are they correct. Over, they, 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 they estimated that they'd be spending more in salaries than they actually did. They over right. budgeted. They over budgeted. Yeah, and, and unfortunately that cascaded down to a... Yeah. Um, and, and got triggered by a failure in, in how we decided to allocate expenses. And the problem is that they created a problem, but it's now our problem to make up for it because we can't justify billing them. Well, but yet they gave us the numbers which were the wrong numbers. Right. Well, oh, the, reality, yeah, yeah. the reality is that the, the counter argument is we don't really want them to have gone out and spent another 150000 just so we wouldn't have to do this, right? That's kind of the push-pull on this one. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the smaller mistake was on the budget. I think the bigger mistake was we should have been able to do a better job of estimating this more appropriately, mm -hmm. which I think we've done now mm -hmm. for FY17. I think that's where you know, I kind of put the, more of the fall down. What is, what is the estimate for FY17? It is far more conservative. Based on, what is it based on? Um, I don't have that information right now. Um, I would have to talk with Barb and find out exactly how we uh, determine that offset, or determine the, uh, the calculation. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have I mean, that. I mean, I would, I would assume it's based on budget. Should be based on payroll, and the question is, what did they budget? put in for payroll? Because if they did the budget. same thing next year as they're doing now, we could face another twenty-six thousand dollars shortfall next year, which we could eat because they budgeted wrong. That's my concern. Mm -hmm. And that could that could happen to any of the departments. That could happen to the South County Senior Center. That could happen to the wastewater in the South same County way. South County Senior Center, you're only talking twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Not a big deal. Uh, yeah, you're talking about but twelve to sixteen. Not, it's not quite like yeah. a half four hundred thousand versus a six hundred thousand dollar deal. No, you're absolutely right. But so here's, here's my question, I'm sorry, because Barbara would be the better one to answer this. So there was an amount of non-South County EMS salaries, which she used to try to estimate what our retirement cost was gonna be. Mm -hmm. And then there is the estimate of the South County salaries. Obviously that's where we estimated too high. Mm -hmm. But then shouldn't our entire estimate for our total retirement cost have been too high also? No, we get billed by Franklin County retirement. Right. And but where, as we add where, more where people, they come up with the eighteen percent. This, I'm but not but sure. as we add more people, that number must go up. Maybe with some lag. The four hundred. Well, I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact number. Is that based on a prior year? It is based on a calculation that the uh, Frank County Retirement System comes up with. And remember that they're not billing for actual retirement costs of our current retirees. Right. They are also building up an OPEB yes. fund. Yes. And because of that, that number is probably, and I'm making up percentages here, but probably 50 or 60% to cover the current retirees and 40% going into an investment account. Um, they expect to be fully vested by 2036 or something like that. Um, at that time, in theory, the town's assessment will drop significantly. I, I believe that when I see it. Um, so there's that. In terms of how it's allocated, you're absolutely right. We're going to pay the same amount each year, regardless of how we internally allocate those costs. Um, and I do know that Barb was very careful this year for FY17 to make sure that she had enough money in her budget, um, even assuming that there were going to be errors in those offsetting so costs. From why wasn't year. this in special town meeting form? because I just received that a week and a half ago from her. That's the only answer I have. All right, what's anyone think? So moved. I'll move the, we're gonna pay it. Okay, well, I, before we vote it, and I'm not disagreeing with the direction that it's headed, what can we do that collectively to try to change Send a letter to scams and tell them get the rack together. No, this is bigger than that. This is generally to stuff that should the go through special time there, meeting or go through earlier. They put a lot of fluff in their budget, and I've said this for a couple of years now. And when you take a look at the fact that last year they had a half million dollars left over from a $1.1 million budget, obviously the budgeting way too high. And this is part of the follow-up. The problem is now Deerfield has to eat the 26000 because of their mistake. It wasn't our mistake, it was their mistake. So you know what they did? We'll correct and we'll talk about the 2015 budget that they got because Casey finally, I found out a month after the town meeting, 
that they got credit for $22,000 worth of funds for 2015. Well, here's a $26,000 mistake. $26,000 mistake. We didn't make it. Who made the mistake? Yeah, I mean, I and I agree with Skip. We're going to have to pay the damn thing. But I'll tell you, at least we should send a letter to them to say, get your act together. Yeah, you know, and I, I do understand where you're coming from, John, but I think Dylan's point is, what can we do? We can't do nothing other than pay it. No, as far as the future. Right. So this doesn't we happen need, again. We try to, to get this into, if, if we're dealing with items like this, trying to get it into a special town meeting. We, we need to process these differently, because guess what? No one's watching. No one's going to watch the, like, not gonna you know, the, this never comes up. And it's great. We have a selectman here, and I know he, thank you for coming. And I know Doug's going to be doing a lot more to try to improve our process as we have this year. Um, but this is the problem with this stuff is because this never sees the light of day and just every year is kind of going under the rug. If, uh, if they had fully staffed their ambulance service for this year, would we have this issue? Uh, yes. It, I'm sorry, no. It, it would have been smaller, but the, the point, my contention is not about what they should have done staffing or what they should have done budgeting, but once any situation like this comes up, which we knew Halfway at least, the year. yeah, this should have come up months ago, either through us months ago, through us months ago, or through a special town meeting, because this is over $25,000, this is a big number. Sure. One solution to this, in this case, would be to apply the same kind of formulas that the town uses to um, determine the administrative indirect costs. Uh, the administrative indirects um, are calculated as a function of salaries based on the overall salaries that the town pays out to all departments, plus the benefits for that department as a percentage of the overall benefits paid out to all departments and so on and so forth. Now that's one formula. But another possible formula would be to look at how many staff people you have on, regardless of how many hours they're working, and use that as a percentage of how many staff people are in the town. Well, I, um, or the overall budget of the department as a percentage of the overall budget of the town. Um, and use those percentages or perhaps a formula that combines those together and gets a rough average. And now, okay, well, let's say that's 1.4% of the overall town budget for the year. Or, I'm sorry, 14% of the overall budget for the town for the year. Now you're going to pay 14% of the retirement. We don't care how much you pay out in salary or how many people you hire or fire or don't. 14%, that's what you're responsible for. It could be that. Um, and that would be one way to provide a predictable, reliable, and non-refutable number, but one that wouldn't change. I, I appreciate that. I just, I think we're getting off track. And again, whatever system you set up for this or anything else is going to cover 95% of cases. Sure. What I want us to do better with is the 5% that doesn't work. Every time it doesn't work, that doesn't mean you create a new system. There's always going to be a tail. There's always going to be some sequence of events that doesn't fit into your box. But for the ones that don't fit, for the things that do slip through the cracks, we need to do better than sitting on 26 grand for four months through a special, through two specials and a regular town meeting, and then throwing it into finance committee reserve fund on June 21st. So that's my point. You're absolutely right. You, no matter what, you're going to have about five percent of any system not work, or in five percent of the cases, things aren't going to work, or for every hundred dollars you spent, five dollars is going to be wasted, or five dollars is going to be misappropriated, you're going to be constantly making up that five percent somewhere along the line, which is exactly the percentage of the annual budget of the town of Deerfield that we put into the reserve fund. You're, you're mixing metaphors. Your, uh, your percent, no, of, fail your percent of failure is, not the, is, is a totally separate argument from your percent of waste. You're right about setting a percent of waste, and I don't have a problem with the 80,000, but that, other than the fact that there are similar numbers, nothing to do with the percent failure of a system and how you handle and manage the failures of that system. One is a process, the other is a result, right? And what I'm saying is this process is suboptimal. We, we need to put this stuff through quicker so it can be part of the conversation about how departments are being run, about how money be is, is being spent, and how budgets are being formed. Wouldn't you think that people would have liked to have known that the electric budget was $4,000 in the hole when we were voting on it two months ago. That would have been nice. And I know we didn't know all the numbers, but we knew enough at that point to know we were short and to know that we're underfunded again for FY17, so we did not put forth our best budget. No, we didn't. No, we and didn't. So, we didn't put forth our best budget for our electric. We didn't put forth our best budget 
for um, legal expenses. We didn't put forth our best budget in a variety of cases, some of them very small right. variances. Um, in, but we did a, put together a budget that we tried to make fit within the capability of the town to pay. Right, um, but the reason for the electric being low wasn't because we didn't have the money or didn't want to purpose, because we didn't know we were short until now. I hear what you're saying. Okay. We will continue to do better at uh, estimating our um, overall expenses as the year progresses. We do have reports that come out every single month from uh, the town accountant's office that now very clearly show expenses to date as a percentage of overall expenses for the year or overall appropriations. Many cases, it's very easy. The electric, very easy. Salaries, very easy. Where are we? We should be spending about 8% every month for salaries over the course of any given year. And as long as we're doing that, as long as we're at eight or slightly less, then we are on target. That doesn't work for every single department and that doesn't work for every single type of expense. Right. Um, in the case of the retirement, we get one payment once a year. Right. But we knew how the scams was trending. So even if, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's true. So here's the thing. What I'd like to do is you're, you're doing a great job trying to manage this. And I think that what the finance committee could do, and I'm not going to be here next year, so I'll just throw it out there, is just kind of make it known that anything that didn't just happen or is more than $1,000 isn't going through in the last 45 days of the fiscal year because there, unless it is an actual emergency, this should be handled before if it's a big number. And if we're putting through, you know, 4,000, if we're putting through 4,000 bucks in February, fine, then it's through and it's known. Mm -hmm. We've spent the money mm -hmm. and we have the information and we can use it as part of budgeting. But if we let this happen, then this will happen. If I knew in February that we're going to be $26,000 short, there would have been an article in the special town meeting to pay for it. The reason why you're addressing this in the last two weeks of June is because I was only made aware of it. All that being said, I will double my efforts to be overseeing not, all of this. I'm not putting it on you. I don't think you had something on your desk and stuff. That Since I'm the one sitting here, um, I'm the one who's going to take responsibility for okay. it, and I'm the one who's going to promise that I'm going to try to do better next year. All right, well, and I appreciate your, this is your first year through it, as it was mine chairing this, and we're both learning as we go to some extent. Yes, but. and we have the scars to prove it. Yes. <laughs> Can you not amplify on what happened in 2015? Because I don't remember this coming up last year. Did That's what I thought. Did so why was it a problem this year? I believe in 2015, what happened was Barbara estimated through her contacts at the retirement system, as well as the insurance companies and so on and so forth, she estimated the full amount for those costs, for insurance, for the retirement, so on and so forth, and asked for that full amount. In FY16 for the first year, oh, and let me back up, I'm sorry, in FY15, let's, I'm gonna use a round figure. Let's say she asked for 900,000 for retirement because she knew that's what the bill was going to be. In the EMS budget, they set aside $65,000 for retirement. In the wastewater budget, they set aside $14,000, again, I'm making up numbers, for retirement. In the South County Senior Center budget, they set aside $12,000 for retirement. So instead of the $900,000, you've now appropriated $980,000 for a known $900,000 bill. In FY16, for the first year, we actually tried, and it was the first year we did it, we actually tried, we said, we know the bill will be 900,000, but he's saying he's gonna pay 70,000 of it. He's saying he's gonna pay 14,000 of it. She says she's gonna pay 12,000 of it. We're gonna subtract those amounts from this, so we only have to appropriate $810,000. Does that make sense? Yep. And we did that with the health insurance, we did that with, with retirement, we did that with all the other shared expenses that were being covered in other budgets. And as a result, we were able to reduce the overall cost to the taxpayer because we weren't double appropriating all the way along. So let me ask you a question then. And, and that was the first year, we messed it up. We messed up the formula. Okay. The $26,200 was directly related to SCIMS. So we're getting $57,000 for administrative fees of which we could eat 26,000 right there. What if we reject this? Are they going to turn around and pay us the twenty-six thousand? If we reject this, then we, we as the town, are in default of being able. Where we wind up running a deficit in our retirement expense line account, 
and we end the year in a deficit, and how we get we, smacked how, by the deal. How do we run a deficit? Because I thought they build you a year in advance based upon anticipated salary. I would have, it's been paid. But it's been paid. So, so, but it's been so paid, and the account is in deficit. We would have over spent the account. Over allocated, yeah. Yeah, the account's in deficit. And, and look, I think, and you guys are probably on top of this, but I think you know, next year, on top of doing a better job with the skim specifically, rather than trying to hit it on the nose, you could have Barbara try to uh, assume 110% of the bill, so there's a little bit of cushion. So if it does go like this, then there isn't a big number, and if there is some extra, it just flows back through to the town anyway, sure. rather than to the penny. But again, if you know it, it really has to do with how flexible the underlying salary schedules are, because mm -hmm. the number you know, it's the salaries you don't. Mm -hmm. What I do know that she did this year with health insurance was, I'll use the EMS again, going into her budget for health insurance, she knew there were and again, I'm going to make up numbers. She knew there were three people who were taking health insurance policies that cost $25,000. Mm -hmm. So she knew that the EMS budget would pay for that. So she put that into her health insurance budget as an offset. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's all I'm going to allow. So now if five people in the EMS decide to take insurance, it's the EMS that's going to have to come up with that money, mm -hmm. not the town. They're going to have to find it in their budget to pay the town for that expense. So, and, and I know she's doing it with all the other offsets that she's uh, got control over, so this will not happen in FY17. The, uh, the uh, retirement is, is completely different from health insurance, we get bills on a, on a monthly basis. It depends who takes it and who doesn't. It takes right. it. Sure. It's pretty simple. Yeah. This one we get billed Matter of fact, yeah, she's yeah. sitting. She's probably sitting on the bill now. Right. And, and she's got it off, and it, so yeah. we know what the July mm -hmm. figure is going to mm -hmm. be, and she'll pay in right. July. So uh, if for the entire year. If you're looking to get um, <laughs> early notification of things, I I can probably say this that uh, I've been informed by the town clerk that our health insurance budget for FY17 is um, short by about eighty thousand dollars. Due to increased enrollments? Increased or? enrollments. Um, well beyond what her expectations were. She estimates a certain number of people will add insurance That's every a year. And that number got blown out of the water. Completely blown you out of the water. You identify which departments? Yes. So that's information you have to give to the selectmen. Yes. That's critical. Yes. $80,000, that's all we got in our budget for next year. We can't absorb that next year. No, it's going to be an article at that town meeting. Because we know so early, it's going to be an article at the town meeting. It'll be an appropriation from free cash or somewhere else. Can you share now what departments those are? Uh, my understanding is it's entirely um, a new policies that came from the elementary school. Whether that's new people or people changing policies or people adding policies, I don't know. Okay. Um, well, thank you for digressing on, onto this topic, and I think it is, is helpful uh, to, to go through it. Uh, Skip, I think you had started to make a motion. He did make or, a motion. Did make a motion. Made a motion. Would anyone like to second that motion? Second. Okay. Any further discussion before we vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I Any? vote no. It's a matter of principle. Okay. okay. Noted. Even though. How do you spell that principle? G R I N C T P L E L E L E. Hell yeah. Because <laughs> I correct him at the bank when the guy put down principal only, he wrote principal wrong, so I had to correct him. <laughs> okay, so that we, we've now passed all the um, requests for a total of 44,544, spot 88. That leaves a balance of roughly six, little under $6,000, or a little over $6,000. Yes. Um, just in case something else comes up between now and June 30th. Um, so I'll sign these and give them to you after the meeting. Um, I don't know if it works this way or if it can work this way. The $12,000 is in anticipation of legal expenses that we will incur up to the end of June. Um, I, I'm hoping that that's going to be more than enough to cover it, and I'm hoping that I won't be spending that much. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's out of the budget and it's into the uh, it, it's out of the reserve account. It's into the budget. It's, it really doesn't. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Okay. Well, there you go. 
Yeah. So it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. Whether the money's in your left pocket or your right pocket, it's still it's in gonna, It's going to wash through to the free cash to be poor right. or Right. Unless you have a reserve, a reverse reserve transfer request form you want to submit. I could actually request that that be held over to the next fiscal year. Yeah. Any extra in that account can be held over do, to the next Do you see anything that might come up that could? I really don't. Um, I've, in terms of my own department, I've told uh, Pat Kroll to stop ordering anything except for you know, pens and post-it notes, you know, real small dollar stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've reviewed my own budgets and I know that we're well under for all of our budgets, both expense as well as salary, considerably under for salary. Um, the town hall expenses, uh, electricity and the other contracted services, I think we're okay. I contracted services, we're gonna be very, very, very tight, um, but I think we'll be under. So we should be all right with that. Um, and we did a lot more than we expected. Uh, we were able to, to save a lot of money based on good choices uh, and, and a lot of work being uh, taken in office instead of being contracted out. Um, as far as I know, the highway department is good. As far as I know, the transfer station is good. Uh, you've already got the one transfer from uh, re uh, the reserve request from uh, the police department. Otherwise, his numbers are solid. The senior center is very good. Um, the library, as far as I know, is right about exactly on the line, but they're, they're still under, so that's good. Um, Assessors' expenses are well under, uh, considerably under by about 20 to 30 percent, which is something we'll be looking at next year. Um, the uh, rec department is just the salary for the rec director, and that's right on where it should be. And as far as I know, all the other accounts for town clerk are inside. Um, I do expect some departments to be turning back money, um, including my own. What's your so, uh, what's your over under on we're free we're free cash? Well, let's see where did we settle it as of the last uh, four hundred fifty seven thousand. Is that still where we are? There's nothing else that would have changed Different that. Yeah. No, so, yeah, other than the appropriations so, from town meeting. So let's say on four fifty. What's your over under on where it is when you uh, certify it in the fall? Over under. Oh, your like moral, moral, are you asking how much I think we'll be holding back like, at the end of the fiscal year? I would not even begin to venture a guess. What do you think the number is going to be that's certified in the fall? Is what I'm asking. I would not even begin to venture a guess. I'm hoping it'll be another 450. Um, but I have ideas and I have my own goals in terms of how the town proceeds forward using free cash. So um, let me ask, what was your question? Would you read? My question is, if we close the budget year at 457, that number is going to change by what we over budgeted or underspent when they certify free cash in the fall to start next year's budget process. And my question to him was, what do you think that number is going to be? Like last year it jumped from what, 400,000 to 1 point something yeah. million? Yeah, 1.4. We're going to be taking in about $90,000 in real estate sales over the next, well, I hopefully can close on one within a week and a half, although that's unlikely. We'll be taking in at least $15,000, $20,000 in real estate sales um, before the end of the year. We've taken in a probably a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars in building permit fees alone. We're closing out the plumbing, gas, and wiring revolving fund. That'll fall back into free cash. We're closing out the peg access revolving fund, and whatever's left in that will fall back into free cash. That's going to be another fifteen or twenty thousand um, dollars. There's other expenses peg that peg access could not. What's that? Without peg access, you had to leave um, that account. Due to the changes in regulation, that is uh, now going into free cash. We could choose to sequester it in a special account. We chose not to. We chose not to. It allows the town more latitude for a variety of reasons. Yeah, because we got a lot of money in that account, so that's one way to bleed it off. Um, well, actually, a lot of the money was has already been expended for peg access purposes. We upgraded all the equipment out here. I'm glad um, you did that. What's that? I'm glad you did that. Yes, we did. Yeah. Looks like an yeah. hour though, right? Or back to tripod. Yeah, that's because the gear's not entirely installed yet. But um, was that 480 or 10? Full HD, 1080. It's 3D. You're 3D. 3D. Yeah, you're in 3D. Watch out. It's not Man, 3D. Put makeup on you. That's a portable unit. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so the how much the departments turn back, how much each given department doesn't spend, is only a portion of what free cash is all about. Um, we're going to see. Receipts is big. Exactly. I mean, there's there's other funds which close out, which roll in. There's uh, unanticipated receipts, and there's also. Um, remember that our FY16 budget was based on estimated revenues for taxation. And my understanding is that at the end of the year, what they actually collect versus what they expected, those are two very different numbers. And so that gets played with. I don't, 
I don't claim to be an expert on how that works, but all, excuse me, all of these are factors which then will determine how free cash, what kind of free cash numbers we get certified with. So, okay. but you don't want to guess. I don't want to guess. I say out of the last five years, our average free cash certified has typically been between 1.3 and 1.4 million. Okay. So, so, out of the last five so years. starting similarly from starting three similarly to four hundred thousand right dollars. Here. Yeah. Well, and I think we can all so agree we'd like to narrow that jump a little bit. We don't want to be zero because you should be conservative, but jumping eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars seems like a lot to me. Now when you get huge building permits and sales of property and stuff. Well right. there there are there are a few things and that's that's one that I don't think you'd want to try to estimate. No. Right. Any, any, You're any, better off staying conservative you know. the way we are right Although now. Although we we did know last year that but this time last year, that that was good. That number was going to be substantially higher than what was budgeted. Right. Uh, we did, but we but good accounting practice says you can't use that as a verifiable revenue. Yeah. Right. It's money literally that you can't count on. Anything can happen, which can cause that money to to never show up. So. Yeah. And uh, so so that's that's the one. I think that's the one area that that. You know, I don't think there's a whole lot that we can do much with. Right. Uh, there are some other, you know, I think we ought to take a good look at the entire local receipts. And I wouldn't mind, you know, we talked about it before. Let, the, let somebody from the DOR come in and talk with us about the budgeting process. There are a number of contacts that I've made over the past several months, and I'm happy to start setting up some of those if the Finance Committee is interested. Uh, over the course of the summer. Um, you know, I, I'd like to have, since Terry Williams is the one that uh, and and he's he sharp said as a he's tag. willing to do it. Yep. So, And if we open it up to Finance Committee and the Select Board and CIPC and Assessors. Absolutely. And anybody else from the public who wants to show up. That's right. Um, so everyone gets a real strong sense from the people who've been doing this for 30 and 40 years. Yep. It can only help. Yeah. You know. As long as we all approach it with a, a good open mind and go, all right, these are the guys who are going to be giving a blessing or not to our numbers. Um, yep. And if we all agree that you know we're going to follow their lead, I think it'll help in the long run. It'll help get our budgets tighter, closer to the numbers, and it'll help us all work together a little bit better. So that and I think takes that, all the fun out of it. I know. And hopefully, you know, some of the regulatory changes, the municipal modernization bills going through will help as well. You know, whether it's collapsing all the um, overlay surplus accounts into one versus different ones for every year, and just there's a lot of little things that I think can really just kind of tighten everything up. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I think right. the problem is they have to keep their excess overlay accounts segregated by year. Yeah, I think even if it's a negative figure, I think it's minus changing. thirty-four dollars, they still have to keep it yeah. segregated. That's, until that, that's it, changing. No, that's, that's changing. Even, yeah, even, even, if they had, even if it changes, the total should still be the same. Right. 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 It'll just be easier to have a conversation, and if you're over or under, get closer to where you need to be. Yeah. You know, rather than oh, I can't take it out because that has to stay in two thousand and eight or whatever it is. Right. Um, all right, I think the only other things, you know, if there's anything else people want to discuss and just things we can do better, the only couple ideas I had were I think discussing local receipts much earlier should be a priority. That's something we can certainly do in the fall, <laughs> you know? That's something Are you talking about estimates, estimates for next year? Are you talking about revenues? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, That's um, something we can do. And, and that, uh, we're going to start talking about it in July. <laughs> July. July. Yeah. You know, once you have all the all the FY16 numbers in, you can take a look at that and, Some and go from there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think having the preliminary meeting with the select board was helpful, and I think having the second meeting with the select board closer to town meeting was helpful as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, leveraging off of, you know, Doug and his office to, you know, we spent a lot of time going through a lot of those line items, and I, and I think some of it, and especially the complicated ones, it's necessary. I, I just keep thinking there's got to be some way to streamline the process to some extent, um, but it's tough. I mean, if you think about it, we, we spent a lot of hours going through it, and um, I don't know if there's a, a way we could be more effective with our time. I don't know. What does anyone think? I mean, one of, <clears throat> one of the things that I've kind of harped on 
uh, is, and, and we've done a lot more of it, is getting the allocating the expenditures out of Barb's office right back to the departments. Mm -hmm. And health insurance. If that was a responsibility of those departments, then they will look at it. And I think, you know, I think we can be far more accurate in our estimates. But right now, you know, Barb's going to make a, a guess, or who's ever in that town accounts has to make that guess. So, and we've been off a number of years, 50,000, 75,000. Right. Well, I think that one place we did a good job this year, and in previous years, but keep building on it is, you know, a lot of ways our role, we're not, we're not the designer, we're the inspector. We're just here to make sure the boxes are checked mm -hmm. and things add up. And I think some of the strongest decisions we made were like some of those offsets where we basically said, I, I had people come to me and said, oh, it should be higher, it should be lower. I said, we don't care. If they agree, because it's between them, that's all we're looking for. Same with the resource officer. If the school and the police force are on board, then we're on board. Yeah. And I think that's where we can, it's not about us saving time, it's just us focusing where we need to focus. And stuff like that that's really between two other parts of the town government, um, I think we did a good job this year of, of letting it stay there. Mm -hmm. I think that's the correct statement you made. That's exactly our, our role here. Is just uh, observing and the inspector. So. And I'll also say, I hope that um, this report thing that I put together, I hope oh. you keep using it yeah. because I felt like, honestly, I really didn't understand the budget until I put this together. This really helped me understand requested versus recommended year over year and broken out um, between the different ways you can spend your money and then where your money's coming from. And um, it was tough to try to articulate it at town meeting in such a short time frame, but I think this year we used it more as a recap, but I think next year you could use it more as a guide. This could be starting to be filled in very early on in the process. And you can start to see kind of the revenue box can be filled out by the fall. Once you certify free cash, you'll have pretty much all the numbers for that box. You, you have all the numbers. And that you can start it's, to it's say- not necessarily yeah, right. the so-called free cash. Right. It's that reconciliation process that they go through. Right. That gives us those numbers. Right. Right. Just for feedback, I had several people comment after the town meeting in that about this format yeah. and how much easier it was to fall and understand right. and they could actually understand it and that. Yeah. So they're very pleased to see that. And that came from several people. I heard the same too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Can you forward that to me again? Mm -hmm. Or is that the report that you submitted that? Mm -hmm. I, I think I sent you in Word, I can send you Excel. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, that'd that's be good, actually. There. The only thing, actually, yeah. I, was, I was trying to reconcile a final version, including a, a new column for voted, but the spreadsheet you sent me, it still has the requested and the recommended, but it didn't indicate, or I couldn't figure out, and I couldn't remember all of them by memory, which ones were actually voted through. Is there a separate place where you kept track of all that? Um, I yeah, Barbara. I know. I know it's on the qualitative side, like we took kept track of the votes, but in terms of a spreadsheet that actually, did it was that. the um, in in the big spreadsheet that I sent yeah. you. I think it was the tab called Finance Committee Report. Yeah, it was one of the very first tabs on the left, um, and it was the one that had check boxes on, down the right hand column. Okay. Um, so as a check box gets checked, the request it shows up in the voted column. Okay. And, or Over I would type time. in the adjusted okay. number in there. Okay, I, there's a lot of tabs. I must yeah, so it's, it's one of the first right. ones on the left. Anyway, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I can send you this. Um, anyone else have any ideas? Jeff, this is your first year on here. What do you. I, I, Are we to get you to come back? or? <laughs> yeah, no, crazy? no, I'm, I'm coming back. There's no question about it. But still, still a learning curve, but I have learned a lot this year. And uh, as far as the board, you know, it's up to, it's up to, the ultimate is up to the the people of the town on yeah. how they view this but I just want to remind people that uh, the finance committee is just more or less a check and balance uh, committee here so and we do the best we can I think we've done a pretty good job this year as far as the committee and, and I want I certainly uh, everybody's done a great job but just you saying that brought to mind you know, I want to commend you at the, the last special it's very difficult to speak on an issue 
in front of a group of people that you know don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought you did a very good job of that. And that's where I felt I did not do as good of a job at the regular town meeting. I thought we did a great job getting ready for it. I really hoped I could do a better job articulating. And that does not mean changing the outcome of any of the votes, like right. you said. Right. It's really just about us representing to the people that mm -hmm. we're here to serve our collective process and thoughts and can be taken, disregarded, right. challenged, argued, whatever. Um, but I, you know, it's, uh, it was definitely a learning experience for me to handle the process of town meeting and the way that conversations take place. And, and hopefully um, you guys can, can learn from what I didn't do as well as I wished in terms of just articulating this. It's very hard to articulate a bunch of numbers and uh, I thought I could have done better. And I think we, I think we did do better at the special and then at the, the subsequent one as well. But um, I gave myself a C minus for town meeting. And I would, I would also like to thank all the board members for uh, kind of taking me under the wing and helping me along the way. Much really appreciated. And Doug, thank you also. So um, I want to echo that sentiment. Um, over the past year, uh, particularly since January, um, and I've been involved with the town since a year before, um, but since January, I've been sitting in this seat. It's really hot over here, um, and we've had conversations about budgets, and we've gotten into detail, and, and we've agreed on some things, we've disagreed on other things, we've gotten some, some good knockdown down drag outs, but um, I want to thank you as a committee and the members that are not here, Mary and uh, Bill, um, for doing the job that's a very difficult job, a very thankless job, um, you received a great round of applause at the annual town meeting, and it was deserved. Um, you do a very tough job uh, trying to do what's best for the town. But I do want to thank you personally for the work you've committed to doing and the work you've done with me over the course of the year. Um, I do also want to say that a lot of things I've heard over the course of the past six months, things like, well, in the past we've always, and, well, it's my understanding that, and, well, we used to, and whatever the thing happens to be. I've been keeping track of those things. Um, over the past several days, I've been working on a, a first draft of uh, financial policies for the town, um, drawn from what other towns do in some cases, because who wants to write a credit card use policy from scratch? Um, in other cases, from uh, common sense, it's coming from the DOR, eight to 12% should be in your reserves at all times. Eight to 12% of your operational budget, for example. Um, but many of, what's, many of the thoughts that are in those policies I heard at this table. Um, we should keep this much in our free cash at the end of the year. That's there now. That's what I'm starting with. We should always be putting this much into, reserve, into stabilization. That's there now. And I'm hoping that once the select board have a first look at it, once it goes past the town accountant, and it's going to come to you, and then it'll come to the CIPC. And I'm hoping that once each of those committees reviews it, offers advice, makes some changes, we will then have a set of financial policies that we can all look at, point to, and go, it's there. That's what we should be doing. We all agreed to that. It makes sense. And it won't be, well, we always, no, we, why sweet, no, we, it won't be that anymore. We just look at this policy and say, this is our map. This is our guide. This is what we should be doing. Um, it's very rough right now, but hopefully you'll be getting that in a week or two. And uh, again, my thanks for your work over the course of the year. I think, um, Dylan, uh, what you and Jeff are discussing a little bit is part of what we ought to strive to do as the Finance Committee. I mean, I, I think the objective is, like you say, we're sort of the inspector, but I think in our presentations to the town meeting, to groups, we get familiar with the terms and the things we deal with every day, but there's an awful lot of people in the general public that do not have a clue as to what those are or why they are. So good, basic, simple sentences uh, explaining the bottom line of things cleanly is so important. I mean, we, we just get caught up in what we know and we forget about there's a lot of people that are just not aware of the, of the basic subject. And I um, see it many times where, you know, you, you try to write instructions of how to put something together and 
most times you read it, what in the world are they talking about? Then somebody will come along and write it, and it's so basic and so simple. And I, I think of that many times, like in the, uh, the discussion about uh, the last meeting we had, the, the needs ass assessment uh, group with the library. And generally, the, from the audience, the same question was asked numerous times, over and over. And I wouldn't say that people weren't listening, but there was maybe just not a good, simple explanation of what that vote was about. So I, I think we all need to strive very hard to be clear. And uh, like you say, Jeff did a good job, and I agree, of, of breaking things down and explaining it. Okay. I also think we probably set some sort of committee record for non-unanimous votes this year, which I think is great, <laughs> honestly. Like, seriously, that's not, doesn't happen a lot. It's mm -hmm. so easy to talk and gripe, but then everybody just kind of push yeah. whatever through. And, you know, we had some people on certain ones in the minority of the vote that were very passionate about it and stayed their case very strongly. And we all, I think, got along very well throughout. So I think it's, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. It's important. All right, any, anything else? Anything from anyone out there? Any comments? That would be great. That okay. would be great. I feel like kumbaya on here, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of hard work and uh, you know, coming from somebody new into this as well. And I agree with what you're saying, packaging it simply. People come with a one issue when they're here. Yep. They're like, I want a library. It's all they're thinking about. They don't really understand. Like Jeff's saying, mm -hmm. how all of that comes together and, Impacts right. everybody. Um, they're thinking about one item, and, and it's it is hard to say. Well, we don't have the money, or we have the money for that. But if you do this, we don't have the money for this. And uh, exactly. it does take simple. And, and you're right. People may, may may need to ask multiple times, multiple ways, and then they finally get it. Mm -hmm. They understand. And I think Jeff uh, went a long way to explaining to people. Um, and you two doing it at, at the town meeting too. I mean, people, you know. It, it, it's hard to hear that you can't have everything. And uh, it's very difficult, and um, especially when everyone's kind of passionate for it. So it's good work you do. And uh, if anybody has ideas of you know new people to add. Oh, sorry. Just a, just a quick thing. I know probably preaching to the wrong group, but um, I think we've overused special town meetings. I agree with what Dylan had to say that all these things need to be on the table beforehand. Sure, there's gonna be things that come up at a later time, but it just seems like in the past, I know Doug doesn't like to hear that, but everything happens at a town meeting that should be at a town meeting. You know, know that the town meeting is gonna be two nights and, um, and maybe fix the wording so it's correct on the warrants so you don't have to have that special town meeting so it has to come back again and um, you know because you're dealing with special interests all the time and I just think that the one town meeting we should have all the everything should be available and I know you all work very hard to get there but it just seemed like there was you know things were worded wrong the numbers whatever for whatever reason weren't right um, and I just think, you know, one town meeting, whether in plan on two nights, if it's going to be an extensive thing instead of all these specials, because that's going to cost the town some money too. And you have, um, you don't get that. You can have a town meeting here on a special. Town meeting is at Frontier because you know it's going to be a lot more people attending. So I just, just that comment that, you know, I think a better job to, should be done for having all the information at the regular town meeting and not have to go um, to all these specials that we've been having consistently. Scott, I'd like to follow up on that because that's a very good point. I've, I've felt strongly about this for several years. The more we can do in the annual town meetings, the better off we are, and especially when it comes to the financial components and the big dollar items. And I think, I think all of us are aware of that. I would like to see uh, the special town meetings play a very small role. I would like to avoid as many special town meetings as possible because I think you get a better cross section at your annual town meetings and I think you can discuss items that might be a little controversial 
uh, more openly and to a larger crowd. And I'm not saying that just because of the last special town meeting. I have not been an advocate of special town meetings because you're right, a lot of times special town meetings end up being, I call them special interest meetings, not special town meetings. So uh, I concur on that. And hopefully in the future, we're a little more careful as far as how we use special town meetings compared to annual town meetings. And I do understand there's a component where things come up because it's a timeline or whatever, and we don't have a choice. But I prefer, I guess, I guess with some of the long-term planning that I've been talking about, some of those issues won't come up at the last minute where we have to have that special town meeting. So that's all I have to say about that. I thought the only reason you wanted to do that was so you could save 50 bucks and not pay the moderator. <laughs> you know, I've got to cut the budget, John. I, I do think we've made some progress. I mean, this we used to have capital every fall, mm -hmm. right? Put it off right. and have the excess cash and do it then at a special. So I think I agree we can make more progress, but we've made some. I know we mentioned at one point, Doug, uh, having the annual time meeting be later in the year. That I don't know require, what sort of... That would require a bylaw change. Yeah, because I think... Does you someone know, want to sponsor one? Uh, so long as it's at an annual town meeting and not at a special town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> then it won't happen for then a few years. I don't years. care. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, and again, I don't want to... At some point, there's trade-offs, right? As you get too close to the end, too late, need mm -hmm. too much time from this and that. But to know more about the governor and the house budgets, to know more about the different things that are going to come up, to know more about what we're getting in towards the end of the year and what might otherwise have to go through the reserve fund. Like, you know, even if each week would be helpful. And again, this year I can say it's not because we didn't have time to do what we needed to do to get ready. You know, some years it's just a, you know, just trying to get there ready for it is hard enough. This year we actually had the time, but I think that we'd have better information. Um, and be able to fold more into that evening. But. It wasn't that long ago, though, that we had town meetings in March. So mm -hmm. it is an improvement mm -hmm. end, of, end of April. Well, then maybe just starting the process earlier and being a little bit stricter with people understanding that these other mm -hmm. options aren't options, that it's not just going to, oh, just throw it in a special in May mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, because right. if those options are there, people will take them. Um, but... You know, I think that's where Doug's kind of uh, rule book, guidebook, you know, can be helpful to try to lay out some of these things. And again, like all the other systems we're talking about, they're going to fail some percent of the time, and we're going to have to have some specials, and some of them are going to be big ticket well, items. This, one of the specials that we have, typically, and the place where I think it, I don't have a problem with it, is when you do the special town meeting in conjunction with the annual town meeting, where you need to appropriate funds. Right for the current given for the current year. Right. Year. Right. Do what it's do what it mm -hmm. right. that makes sense. Yeah that was yes. good. The yeah. um the habit of Deerfield doing that actually uh, is somewhat unique to this town. Um, it's not necessary legislatively. Nope. Um, you can combine it all into one meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and to be brutally honest, the special town meeting, even it's held even if it's held in conjunction with the annual, holds an, a far higher cost because now you have to publish that warrant in the newspaper and each special town meeting warrant is anywhere from six to twelve hundred dollars to put in the paper so i'm with all of you the less special town meetings we have the more money we save absolutely um the the question is how long do you want your annual to be um because if right. you're talking about like right. zoning changes right. policy changes uh you know making up costs that were underestimated or overestimated for the current fiscal year plus appropriating all the other information and all the budgets for the next fiscal year, plus any citizen warrants, plus all the other business that happens, you will be talking two days. Well, well and that's where you can Which, practically say, all right, we're doing omnibus one night and everything else the next night. Or some, some like, you could. every year you, certainly you could split it yeah. some I, big picture way. Or you handle everything except financial matters on one night and do financial right. matters on the other. Right. Sure. If you make it known that it's going to be two nights, that's yeah. better. I know when I first came here to... I remember one night we went until midnight or something. Right. It was terrible. And yet I stick it out because I go to every single one and stay every moment. Sure. But if people understood that, no, it is two nights, and I don't know if they have to be right together or a week apart, but it, plan it for that and mm -hmm. put some cutoff times on it, too. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so that people can kind of plan their schedule. Mm -hmm. I, and I also I'll ask I, about Sar a Saturday. Do the town meeting on Saturday? Yeah, I love a lot of idea. towns do it. A lot of I love towns the, do the first Saturday yeah. in May. The, 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 reason, like, the only reason you did it on Saturday and offered lunch to everybody who showed up? Most towns and they always had three, four hundred. Well, people the only up. reason why I'm throwing that out there is because, let's face it, you know, our town meetings, whether they're special or even the annual town meeting, you have a limited population there, very mm -hmm. limited population. And I don't know if it's because of lack of interest from the public. I don't know if it's because of of uh, work schedules Shifts. with people. You know, how can I go to an annual town meeting? I know it's going. You know, we won't get out of there till ten thirty, eleven o'clock. Also, there's babysitting issues and that as far as kids at home. Right. I'm I'm just wondering if 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 Saturday Saturdays would draw a better crowd to our annual Where's town meetings as far as a better representation of population. And I don't know, it might might be the same number of people turning out, I'm not sure. What you might avoid actually is a meeting that would go five or six hours. Normally you would split that across two nights. Mm -hmm. But if you had it on a Saturday starting at say 8.30 or nine, break for lunch at 12, one o'clock you resume, you're going to four, but you haven't lost anybody. Right. And you don't have the risk of somebody coming back on night two Move, making a motion to reopen a question that was already decided on night one, which procedurally is correct, but really kind of underrated. Um, so, I, and I would agree. Uh, like I said, uh, the Heath town meeting is on a Saturday. It's a potluck. Everybody brings food. The, the the Montague town meeting for years was on a Saturday, and and the town provided lunch for people. And since they had it right there at the school, they just served lunch in the cafeteria, and it worked out perfectly. Um, so I'd be all in favor of that. I think it'd be great. On another note, I just wanted to say too, you know, we're talking about the uh, complaints about these meetings and various complaints and so forth. And I, I would say that with the number of years I've been involved, that I, I see some big changes that we forget about. Uh, you know, working closely with the accountant, with Barbara, with assessors, with Doug, with uh, Casey in the past. There's a lot of professionalism here. Uh, Vic's crew over here. Uh, people are working hard, and the computer systems have been vastly upgraded. We're much better off than we were a short while ago. Uh, John Paterk has worked hard on the police, and all these various departments, Kevin on the DPW, and, and I, I know people go, oh, cost, but, but still at the same time, I think there's good leadership, there's good direction, there's good products being purchased things that will slowly help to contain costs and get us in a safer position, a better position. So uh, it, it, as much as we hate to hear somebody grumbling or complaining, it's sort of a good thing because I think people are learning more about the town because of all these departments, because of these publications, maybe not as much as they should, but at least they know more. So it's not always a bad sign. I, I do think that all in all, the town has been really moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I'd like to make a couple of comments. Number one, one thing I've always tried to do was whenever an issue came up, if there was something wrong, you try and address it based upon the cost or the major impact to the town. And uh, to give you an example, Every time I was a selectman, I'd go to Boston. They'd always give you a choice of eight or 10 different classes you can go to over three different venues. And I always took the one that was the hardest or most expensive or what meant the most in terms of dollars for the town. One of the things I learned about was the uh, tax, the, uh, I forgot what they even call it now. It was a way of getting money out of the state because you had, I think they called it an excess debt credit. If you voted a new school, you could turn around, put into the Board of Education and get excess debt funding for that. So we put in, and one year they turned around when I was the chairman of the selectmen, said that they weren't gonna pay our money that they were supposed to be given to us. And I said, why? They said because I hadn't submitted a certain report and according to their figures, we were underfunding education. 
I says, you're crazier than a <laughs> billy goat. I says, at that time we were overfunding Yale Elementary School by over a million dollars a year based upon what we had to do. We were overfunding uh, Frontier Regional by two million dollars, a million dollars of excess in the town of Deerfield. So we're overfunding education. Well, by the time I got through, I found out that we had to do things like a report had to go from the town clerk to the school department. The school department had to submit that report to the state. Every time you find out there's a problem, you've got to find out where the problem is and where the problem broke down and what we have to do to fix it. So between learning about all this stuff and following through, I ended up getting like $57,000 extra for the school for the excess debt credit, the elementary school. Second year, they got twelve or fifteen or seventeen thousand dollars excess debt credit again. And then it fell off the radar screen. I went to Frontier Regional and I asked them about the excess debt credit, and I was told we're too rich, we'll never get it. And I said that Stan Rosenberg told me at one of the Frank County Selectmen's Association meetings that, and he brought all the figures with him. Deerfield got it. Sunderland got it, Whiteley got it, and Conway got it. So I pointed out to them and said, if we don't put in for it, and if all the schools, we all built all these schools about the same time, they all got the excess tax credit. Now the question is, we built a new frontier school, why aren't we getting that? And they says, well, we're too rich. I says, if you don't put in for it, you're not gonna get it. So they put in for it, and guess what they got back? $1.12 million. The caveat to that was that they had to take that 1.12 million and since they already had a budget, they couldn't just get that money and keep it. That money came to the town of Deerfield. They had to take that, if they wanted that money, they had to come to the board of selectmen and the selectmen had to vote to release the money to the school department. That would give them a $1.12 million budget, extra. So the thing we pointed out to them was Tell us what you want it for, and if it makes sense, we're going to vote it. I said, if you've got a 37-year-old truck and you need a new one, I said, I can see that. I said, you got a problem with an air conditioner, you need two or three air conditioners or something, I can see that. I said, you want a new school teacher? No. You want another new school teacher? No. You want another new school teacher? No. Because they have a habit. Whenever they get money, they just start hiring like crazy people. And my concern was that I didn't want to let them just get a big pot of money and do nothing. That year we put $550,000 into our stabilization fund that we have now, which has got the million, or we had two million at one time. But those are the kind of classes that I would learn. Now I'm gonna bring up something here that I think is very important that we gotta do from the Finance Committee perspective. We've gotta take and get to go visit the schools, more often than once a year for their annual meeting in January. And the reason for that was because I just heard tonight that they're already over $80,000 out of our budget that they just arbitrarily just gave up and now we've got to make up $80,000 next year for insurance. They don't seem to know or don't seem to care. They figure there's free money there, let's go do it. And that's the same notion that I see with scams. I haven't seen any responsible budgeting for that going on three years now. And the reason I'm saying that is because if we had a half million dollars, five, almost $503,000 excess funds the first year, and then the second year we're going to have close to that again, minus the administrator fee they paid us. And by the way, they're paying us $57,000. Well, guess what? We just ate $26,200 of that $57,000. So now we're down to getting half if we're lucky. I think we've got to meet with the schools and I think we're going to meet with SCEMS. Why? Because they're the biggest problem children that we have. Well, I was going to suggest to Doug when he were running off the people as far as the uh, meeting goes to possibly add the, the superintendent of schools once that's determined in the uh, school committee chair, the two school committee chair people as far as uh, bringing them in too. So 
if we have that large group and hopefully everybody can get on the same page so they can become aware of what the town yeah, is facing. It's not out, right. Yeah. It's not just it's not just the it's school. Not the school they, they've got to understand because it's it's the same. I don't care how you cut it. Uh, you know, you say, well, the school budget and the town budget. Well, it's all coming out of the same pocket. And Guess what? At one time they used to have a separate tax rate for the schools and a separate general tax rate for the town. Right. But then they passed a law saying you can't segregate it like that anymore. So people can't know how much you're paying on right. education. Right. And my concern is that we pay three out of every four dollars that we pay out in this town goes to schools. And people say, oh no, it's only 55, 65 percent. Well, add up the unemployment taxes. Add the health insurance costs. I've seen that thing blow up and, and get out of hand over the years. And the bottom line is if they don't know about it, and if we don't tell them about it, maybe we ought, like somebody said before, we ought to include it as part of their budget so they know how much they're budgeting for. But well, I think, if, I think if we could bring them to the meeting, it'd be all inclusive and, and they would be able to get uh, a, maybe a better view of the big picture and we could understand where they're coming from also a little bit better. So uh, again, once again, you know, we're all in this together, and I'd really like to see a team effort. Make everybody aware of the issues, and okay, here they are. Now, how are we going to resolve these as a group I instead of us against them type thing? Come uh, October, November, if possible, for a preliminary meet before they really go into the full budget process. I think that'd be an excellent idea. And then after that, then they can go through the budget process. Now we've got to have go to the required meeting. In January, February time frame, mm -hmm. but I don't think we got to turn around and let somebody like uh, Skems off the hook, where they just say, "Oh, well, we're going to do the budgeting." I turn around, and complain to Tom Fight and Kevitz about the budgeting from Skems. He said, "What are you talking about?" He said, "We get all those figures from Deerfield." I said, "You don't get them from Deerfield." I said, "Deerfield's complaining to me about them." So somewhere in between, somebody's puffing up all these figures, and it's, we we really need to know what the true costs are and tell them so that we don't get hit with a $26,000 bill like we just had to eat, just for the hell of it. Look, I, th I think that the, the, the goal here is going to be to try to continue to minimize these surprises, these Correct. places yeah. where things slip through cracks. Mm -hmm. And just in the two years I've been on here, I think that we've sort of shed a lot of light in a lot of areas, mm -hmm. and maybe it frustrates us more when we find ones that remain like 80000 on health care is tough. Now, you know, it's, that's not an easy one because you don't always know who's going to take or exactly. why or when they switch plans, but these things are difficult and we do have to continue to find ways. But I think I'm, I'm more impressed with the problems we're facing now than maybe a couple years ago. I think we've made a lot of headway. I think a couple years ago, there was some really basic stuff not being done. I mean, and I'll use SCEMS as an example. Their, their budget process last year was frankly embarrassing. This year, I think they improved the most out of anybody. I'm not saying it's the best, but I think they improved as much as any department did. And part of that, to their defense, was that they know more about what they're doing. They have another year of track record. I think they still need to keep going, and I think they're gonna have a challenge when they come back next year adding their capital request onto the budget that they dropped off this year. As a preview to what I think will be tough about their budget next year. Um, but, you know, I do think we've made a lot of progress. And uh, just need to continue, as, as Jeff said, just you know, bringing in people, having more partnerships across these departments. Mm -hmm. um, the school one's always a tough one to bridge because, to a certain extent, they, in, in many cases, don't live in town, and, and, and they're just there to work for the school and advocate for the school, and that's it. And so that those that can be challenging. Mm -hmm. In terms of meeting early the departments, um, I would strongly urge the finance committee to definitely stay active over the course of the summer. And I'll use this very simple analogy to illustrate what I think is the role of the Finance Committee. Uh, imagine, if you will, a father giving a, a son a $10 bill and saying, there, that's yours. You've got that to spend. What are you going to spend it on? Versus the father, father saying, okay, what do you want? If you as the Finance Committee can help work with our assessors and our accountant and with, with the administrator's office 
to develop revenue estimates that we can all agree on, wildly preliminary, we understand, then it's like giving that $10 bill and putting it on the table and saying, this is your piece of the puzzle, this is your piece of the pie that we're expecting for next year. Now go and build a budget based on that. Instead of telling a department, oh, build a budget and then come back and we'll tell you how much you can't spend. I, it, it, it's a subtle difference, I, a uh, difference. maybe not so subtle, I'm, I don't know. I'm with, I'm with you 100%. I think that the challenge towards that type of transition and this is not specific to Deerfield, and this is not specific to municipalities. You see at every level of government. Sure. The amount, the bill that you take out of your wallet to give them mm -hmm. is way smaller than what they're accustomed to spending increase year over year. It could be. It could be. I mean, it is. I mean, if we look sure. at how budgets work, sure. um, you know, the, sure. the budgets are full, and that's after excluding the stuff that's debt excluded and fee driven and this driven and put off till there and reserve fund. like it's you know when you stop and look at what the actual tax rate is going year over year that's why you know prop two and a half is kind of a joke yeah, we found is. so many ways to Around. shred the teeth of like what that was supposed to accomplish sure. mm -hmm. um, and and that's where you know i had a conversation with one department head where they were sort of didn't think that we supported, you know, the department. I said, it's not the department I don't support. And it's not even this year's budget I don't support. It's we can't continue to keep increasing by whatever percent a year. If you told me, look, something happened, we need a jump, and then we're on board, it's, you know, 1% to 2% a year, we understand, that we could find a way. But that's just not currently the mindset of the public sector, generally speaking. And this isn't, like, a person isn't like this, but people can be. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you look at the public sector as a whole, that's a real challenge right now. Mm -hmm. And again, you see it at every level of government. A couple of things I'd like to see, whether it be, you know, finance committee involved with these other groups and that, but number one, establish some uh, potential expense list as far as big ticket items that have been discussed, that we all know are being discussed, that are coming down the pipeline here because as far as a total expense, it's going to shock this time. And it's going to have a major impact at some point in time on, on your tax rates. And it, it would be nice to be able to establish that. And then as Doug was saying earlier, to be able to get an idea on that revenue picture as a group, and then be able to simply say, look guys, this is what we have to spend on town. We take a look at these apartments and we're going to have to go before they even get involved with their their budgets and start building, building, building those wish lists, say, look, guys, we can handle one percent increase. Yeah, build your, all you want. Right, build all you want, but you've got to stay within one percent of uh, increase over last year's budget, and that's the only way you're going to be able to contain this. We got to tell them that up right. Front. And if we don't tell them up front, right from the beginning, right, John, it's going to continue. It's it's going to continue to grow, and you, you know you don't. It's human nature to want to be able to provide uh, the best equipment and the best materials and the best all the way down the line for each and every department. But sometimes that can get a little overblown because each year you're not gonna you're not gonna cut your budget. You're not gonna take a decrease in budget because you're afraid then that's gonna be expected the following year. In the following year. So everybody's going to spend as much as they can on their budget, and then the following year ask for an increase on top of that, whether it's needed or not. It's just human nature. You know, I dealt with it for a number of years, uh, and and you know, some at some point in time, you just say, "Hold it, time out. We can't continue to do this. It's not sustainable." You have your budget. This next budget round, you've got to stay within one percent or two percent or whatever based on that revenue that Doug's talking about. And I, and I agree with Doug to be able to uh, establish some solid financial policies, I think will help provide some, some insight too, as far as what direction we need to have. That's just my own, some of my own thoughts. Yeah, that's the last comment that I'd like to make. I'd like to thank Dylan for your leadership here. Being a chairman, you stood up during the middle of the year when we needed a chairman because of health reasons and... Uh, Wait, I had a choice? 
Because <laughs> you did. It was either you or you. John, I'll second that. So I just want to say thank you. You did a great job. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, somebody's got to turn around and pat you on the back because you did do a good job, and that's what's important. And like I said, this is called uh, professional training. So this is training you up for the next step, the next step, <laughs> like down there, Slackman and Sunderland, or maybe Finance Committee, maybe both of them. We'll see. How about tree warden? Well, Does this the tree warden sound good? No. <laughs> yeah, that's fence viewer. Yeah, fence viewer. Fence viewer. There you go. Yeah. No, that was I was thinking that I've been trying to get for Thank years. You. Maybe boss will wrestle that out of Bill Sherman's hand. <laughs> Jack, I was thinking that's Sunderland Board of Oversight. Well, I've tried okay. to get one for years. I feel more confident there. Yeah, well, thank you. That's all I want. You know, I'm not against that. I am totally the only board of staff. The problem is that over budgeting is killing the town. And some of their policies are killing it down. It's like we start with two ambulances, now we gotta have three. Now we gotta have a garage for three. Oh, now we gotta turn around and make up an RFP so that we can turn around and say, you see, we studied this and this is where we gotta go. All right, well, that thank you for congratulating me on the uh, leading <laughs> and, and I'll be glad to volunteer your name for SCAM Board of Oversight. And, 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 we, and we will go and hold signs up on the bridge. We'll go hold signs. Fantastic. We may be on our half Dylan of the for you Dylan put it away. Dylan, I'll, I'll wave to you. I can you see, see the bridge from my backyard. I'll just say Dylan yeah. Boo. Yeah. But Dylan Boo. School, I hear that. I've heard that a lot. I, heard that a lot. Yeah. 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 I make a motion we adjourn. All right. Second. All those in favor. All right. All right. All right.